of darkness, the second deadly force created when a star dies. It's a cosmic vacuum cleaner sucking in anything that crosses its path. Could that be us? If you look at textbooks from one and 200 years ago, they describe the universe as being this peaceful, gentle place. We have come to learn that the universe has no shortage of ways it can kill us. One of the cosmos's deadliest threats is invisible, travels thousands of miles an hour, and devours everything in its path, a black hole. Voracious is one of the best terms to use in describing a black hole. Anything that comes within their gravitational grip uh, will fall in and will be consumed and turned into more black hole. You shoot a nuclear weapon right into a black hole and it wouldn't even notice. It would be smaller than a pinprick compared to the enormous gravitational pull of the black hole itself. Scientists first discovered black holes in the 1970s and since then have found tens of thousands of them scattered across the universe. Like a gamma ray burst, they're the death throes of a massive star, but with very different results. Stars, as we come to know and love them, are these balls of gas that are neither shrinking nor expanding. They're in balance. Gravity wants to make them smaller, but the heat created by fusion in the core prevents that from happening. But what happens if the nuclear fuel runs out in the center? then the star begins to cool. And when it cools, it no longer has the ability to sustain itself against the gravity. And the gravity wins and collapses the star. When a star that was millions of miles across compresses itself down to the size of a single atom, it creates a massive gravitational pull. The gravity is so strong that no matter your speed, if you try to ascend from this zone, its gravity will pull you right back in. Not only will you not escape, light can't escape. Its gravity is that strong. Initially, scientists thought we had nothing to fear because black holes were stationary. Then in the year 2000, all hell broke loose. At that point, we had conclusive evidence that there are wandering black holes, nomads, renegades, right next to us in our own backyard of the galaxy. But luckily, so far, none of them seem to be heading our way. It would be a bad day for the solar system if we got visited by a black hole. A contest between a black hole and the Earth, Earth would just lose. It's that simple. Let's imagine that it's coming in at, say, 20 or 30 or 40 kilometers per second, about the velocity with which stars move through the Milky Way then it's going to take a few decades to move across the solar system. So we'd have, oh, 20, 30, maybe 100 years warning, something like that, that we had a serious problem. Within days of discovering the black hole, scientists would be able to tell us when and how we were going to die. Because the black hole would wreak havoc across the solar system, there would be no escape. It would be very much like seeing a predator come in to your village and not being able to do anything. As the black hole got closer to Earth, its gravity would begin to cause dramatic changes on the planet. The tidal effects on Earth are going to be extreme. The tides on Earth are not going to be feet high or tens of feet high, but they're going to be miles high and so the oceans will wash over the continents, and that probably would do in most people on Earth. If there were survivors, they would be huddled on the remaining patches of high ground. The psychological effects on everyone would be pretty bad. You'd know that it was over, that, that basically our existence on Earth as we knew it was over. When you finally get close enough for the black hole's gravity to start dominating the gravity of the Earth, then you start hearing the sucking sound as the atmosphere is sucked off through space towards the black hole, followed by everything that isn't nailed down on the surface of the Earth. What will your body do in response? Your body will begin to stretch. 
Now the body's kind of elastic. You know, you can stretch a little bit. That's what you do when you, before you work out, you stretch. So it might even feel good at first. But then the difference in force of gravity will continue to grow. And there'll be a point where it will become decidedly uncomfortable for you. Your feet would be ripped off of your body, followed by your legs, torso, etc. You're one piece, two pieces, four pieces, eight pieces, 16, 32, 64, and you bifurcate your way all the way down to the singularity. I think if you gotta go, that's gotta be fun. If, if I were to pick a way to die cosmically, that would be the way to do it, for sure. If I knew that the world was going to come to an end, I would travel all over the world. Swim in the ocean. Spend more time with the grandchildren. I'll probably cry a lot. Party like there